What kind of collector are you? Do you collect sealed games? Hey Nintendo fans and collectors, Lithium here from my channel Nintendo Collecting. I'm going to talk about sealed games, something I very infrequently ever bring up on my channel. I don't really try and go out of my way to collect sealed games for the most part, however, I'm going to start to maybe change that thing. I don't think I'm going to get into graded games, but before I get too far into this video, I did put up a poll on YouTube and also on Twitter at Collect Nintendo if you want to follow me there. And the poll was just asking, what kind of collector are you? Do you collect maybe just disc only or cartridge only games? Do you collect complete in box games, otherwise known as CIBs sometimes? Do you collect sealed games? Do you collect graded games? So feel free to sound off in the comments below or do you collect a variety of those kinds of games? Now, because I have been collecting for well over a decade now, I do have some factory sealed games. I have stacks beside me. I'm going to kind of show what I have later in the video. But first of all, I don't go out of my way to collect sealed games if I can help it. I much rather actually get the games and play them. Look at all these games. I'm trying to get usually the best games of each system, and I want to enjoy them, play them with my friends, play them with my family, and share them with other people. However, a lot of people, and there is a huge market for sealed game collecting. So I'm really fortunate to do, have some that are obviously quite valuable. And recently, especially in 2020 and 2021, I've just been tracking the sealed game prices, especially graded game prices. A lot of the sealed Pokemon games have gone absolutely crazy in terms of prices. So I might want to try and stay ahead of the curve for this. So what I would like to do is just maybe show off some of my sealed games and kind of talk about how this all got started. So I think one of the first sealed games that I ever bought is this copy of Kirby's Adventure on the Nintendo Entertainment System. This is a Canadian version, so it does have the French and the English on this. So this is factory sealed. I bought it at my local game store when they had it in stock. I think back then it was something like 40 or 50 Canadian dollars, which is like 30, 35 dollars. It's really not that expensive. And I have no idea what the value of this is today. It's really hard to judge, especially all the different variants and things like that. This is something that I am willing to eventually part with in my collection, but I don't have this game complete in box yet, so I'm trying to actually work out a trade to get this game so I can enjoy it and then possibly sell this one off. I'm also starting to maybe consider getting some like games graded because that does increase the price of them a lot, but it also costs a lot of money to get them graded. So it's kind of like, I'm not really sure what to do with that. Let me know if you have had any experience getting games graded or Pokemon cards graded or anything like that. I've never sent them out myself, but I'm definitely starting to consider it. A few years later, I found copies of Pokemon Snap. You can see it right down there, but that's not the sealed version. They had a box of six of them still in the factory case, and I think they were $60 at the time. So it was like the exact same price that they used to be when they originally came out. I bought two, one for myself, one for my friend. And then along the way, a few years ago, I traded my sealed copy away and now it's skyrocketed in price and I obviously regret that. So I'm trying to go against that trend. So that was the first game I got. Then eventually, actually, Toys R Us. For anyone who remembers Toys R Us, awesome. This is Bait and Kaito's Origins. It's a prequel, but it's a sequel to Bait and Kaito's Eternal Wings of the Lost Ocean on the GameCube. This still has the Toys R Us stickers on it, so I did pay $24.98 for this. When it eventually went on sale, I did find two copies of this in the store, and I've kept it sealed, obviously, ever since. Fantastic game series if you haven't tried it before. This is something that's probably worth today, maybe closer to $150 or so, maybe a little bit higher than that for this one, and I just don't love having games sealed because I really think they meant to be played, but it's just really cool to have them sealed. I'm so torn. I'm so torn on this kind of thing. I just see so much value in those games. Sticking with the GameCube, I also have a factory sealed copy of Wave Race Blue Storm. I think I also got this actually at the exact same Toys R Us. So I think this was a lot less expensive. This was like five or ten dollars, but I don't remember exactly. So this game is a really good racing game, and I love the original on the N64 as well. I do have this game already now opened, so I have another copy of it complete in the box. But I do have this one sealed. And the next up is a little bit more expensive. This is Fantasy Star Online Episodes 1 and 2. If this was Episode 1 and 2 Plus, it would be outrageous. So another one that I'm just considering maybe getting graded. However, this one has all this sticker residue at the top, so I'm not sure what to make out about that one. And the only other GameCube game I have, I only have four factory sealed. This is 1080 Avalanche, and hey look, 
It features new music from, and it has two artists right on here. So that's kind of neat. GameCube games is like the oldest back I go. I have nothing sealed for the N64 anymore after that copy of Pokemon Snap. So next I want to go through, I think, my Mario collection of sealed games, then my Zelda collection of sealed games, then like Kirby, Pikmin, Metroid, and some others, just the notable ones, essentially. On this wall, what you're looking at right now are mostly my Super Nintendo N64 GameCube games and my display shelf for some cartridges. I do have more sealed games than what I'm just going to talk about, kind of amongst this shelf. If it's a game that I bought factory sealed, I just never really got around to playing it, then I probably kept it sealed on the left shelf. But in terms of Mario games, I feel like Mario games are going to slowly, of course, increase over time. Anything that's cardboard is way more expensive, but I don't really have any cardboard sealed games that are Mario games. What I do have is Mario Galaxy, but it's the Nintendo Selects version. Anytime I can find one of these factories sealed for like $40 or $50, I'm buying them. So like right now, one of my investments, I have three copies that are factory sealed, but they're all Nintendo Selects. I still would like to get one that's not Nintendo Selects from Mario Galaxy. This is really cool to collect because it's one of my favorite games of all time. So that makes it a little bit cool, a little bit more cool in my opinion. And then of course the sequel to that is Super Mario Galaxy 2. So I have factory sealed copies of that. This one, just be careful, it does say Nintendo of America on the back. There are some from UAE, which are definitely not as desirable to collectors. So be really careful when you're buying sealed games. Try not to get the UAE version if you can help it. So I've kind of loaded up on those as well. I've got two of the original releases and I have one that is the Nintendo Selects for factory sealed of these. Again, these are like investments, long-term investments. I think my goal with these is to probably hold on to them for another three to five years. I think we sealed collecting is going to go up really quickly right now. So I don't think it's that high yet, but I do think it's about to explode. By the way, the Mario Galaxy 2 games, I'm trying to buy those for like 60 to $70. If I can find them around that price, I'm trying to pick them up. And then handheld sealed Mario games, I've got Super Mario 64 DS. This is the red print though, so it's a little bit different. I would like to get the normal maybe release. And I don't think I'm going to go after the entire set, but maybe the entire set from like the 3DS and Wii era on. Super Mario 3D Land, I bought this one at Target when they were closing in my area, and these were on sale for like 5 or 10 bucks each. It was a ridiculous sale for a little while, so I'm really happy to have that one too. And then new Super Mario Bros. 2 from the same location as well. Why not? This is probably one of the weakest Mario games in existence, in my opinion. Anyways, it's fine, but it's more like a 72 to 75%, whereas a lot of the other Mario games just have more polish, have more charm, have more heart, and definitely get higher scores than that. And then we go to the Mario and Luigi kind of franchise. So I've got Dream Team here. Same thing from Target when it was factory sealed way back when for like 5 or $10. And then transitioning from that, we have Mario & Luigi Paper Jam sealed. I do need to get a copy of this, I think, open now that I have it sealed. I somehow got rid of my other copy or lent it away. I'm not sure where it is. So I really want to get a copy of this open so I can actually play it again. And lastly, Paper Mario Sticker Star, right? A lot of people don't mind this game. To me, I wouldn't put it at the top tier of Paper Mario games or RPG Mario games, but it's cool to have it. I have one open and one sealed for that one. So that's most of my main series Mario games sealed. Next up is The Legend of Zelda, and I'm actually shocked at how many sealed Zelda games I have. I think I have like 9 or 10 of them. I am never going to get a complete set of them factory sealed. You say never, but who knows. But I definitely want to get Phantom Hourglass. This is Spirit Tracks, and this one is increasing in value quite a bit as well. And I just, I can't open it. So actually... Within the last two years, I did buy this game opened. I had it opened a while ago. Again, lent it to a friend. How many of you have done that before? Lent a game to a friend and really never got it back. I think that's hilarious, but I almost feel like I need like a sign out sheet or something like that. I should probably do that in like Google Docs or something like that. So Spirit Tracks, but I want to get Phantom Hourglass. And then one of the games that I said collect this now probably six years ago or seven years ago, that video is up on YouTube. I said get Ocarina of Time 3D back then. I thought getting it factory sealed when it was such an inexpensive price would have been a really good idea. And I was wrong. These are pretty common overall. It's not that much of a game that's like increasing in value quite yet. I don't really know. I actually have several copies of this still factory sealed. I'm just going to hold on to them for a few more years and see what happens. Kind of my investments, I guess. I keep wanting to call them. 
And then sticking with the 3DS, we have Majora's Mask 3D. This comes with the Skull Kid figure. That's not an amiibo. And this is still factory sealed. You can see the sticker seal on it. So the game inside is sealed. And of course, the figure is unused as well. So these... Again, I bought a few of these when I could get my hands on them. I think I still have one more factory sealed. And right now, they're maybe worth like $80 to $120, somewhere in that range, depending on condition. They very frequently have damage on the box right here. And mine did come with an actual sticker steel on it. Sticking with Zelda handhelds for a few more, I do have a link between World Sealed. This one you might actually still be able to find in some stores. I know some stores around me have a handful of 3DS games still available. Most of them are clearing them out. And then eventually online, the prices are going to go up, as I said. So one of the best Zelda games, especially one of the best handheld Zelda games that you can get. And then just because it's a handheld, I have Hyrule Warriors Legends. This was a more recent pickup in the last 18 months or so. And I don't think I'm going to open this up. I'm probably going to keep this one sealed too. For home console Zelda games, I wish I had some on the GameCube, but the earliest one I have that was released is this copy of Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. Again, this was from Target. I think I bought this for like 10 to $15. I was really happy to find this, but it is a Nintendo Selects version. If I'm going to play Twilight Princess, to be honest, I'm probably playing it on the GameCube. It was simultaneously kind of released on the GameCube and the Wii. That was crazy how they did that with this game and with Breath of the Wild on the Wii U, and also on the Switch, of course. So this game is actually probably a little bit better if you can play it, transition sound, on the Wii U. So I do have it factory sealed here on the Wii U with the special edition. This one does have the sticker seal. It's kind of really neat to have this sealed with the Amiibo figure. This one is climbing up. This one is a cardboard box. So I do expect this one to gain more value a lot quicker. And I'm not sure. I think you can get these graded as well. It doesn't matter what the box size is. I think they grade almost everything at this point. Sticking with those kind of special editions on the Wii U, this is the one of my favorite games of all time and definitely the definitive way of playing this game. This is Wind Waker HD. This one comes with a Ganondorf figurine, but it's not an amiibo figure. So that's a little bit strange. My wife's currently playing through this one and we are playing, I'm having her play it through the HD version because the graphics are better. I do like the controls a little bit more and there's the Swift Sail. Not really a spoiler, because you get it so early in the game if you know what you're doing, so you can sail across the ocean a lot faster. And it fixes the game with quite a few things. One of my personal favorite games ever, there is a sticker seal right up here, by the way, so I'm just going to try and keep this in best condition possible. It does move a little bit around, Ganondorf does, but overall, awesome just to have that at all. And I don't want to open it anymore. Then I have a copy of the gold front release for Wind Waker as well for HD. This one is awesome to have, and I would love to complete the set and get the one that does not have this kind of gold cover. It has more of a, like, you know, normal coloring with, like, blue background for the ocean and stuff like that on the other cover release. Crazy sealed games. Zelda, I didn't realize how many I had. And then my most recent investments that I want to call it at this point is Breath of the Wild on the Wii U. Again, sealed, of course. These are now mostly out of stores. They're harder and harder to find in stores. So I found a website that was selling them for, I think it was like $49 with shipping with tax US dollars. And I decided, well, I need to jump on this. I expect these to double or triple in the next year or two. So not only did I buy one, but what? I bought three of them and I am going to hold on to these for a few years. And these might be something that I consider sending in to get them graded because they are in pretty good condition. You're always looking to make sure that they have no rips or anything like that. So I figured overall, why not at like 50 bucks each? That's a great deal. And I definitely don't think I'm going to be losing on value for these. So there's a lot of different types of collectors. Some are for value, some are to play the games. Overall, I'm kind of at that in-between stage. All right, let's talk about the next game up. Just other series that I have. Kirby, going back to Kirby. This is Kirby's Dream Collection Special Edition. This should have come in a bigger box, so this one is still sealed. And I really need to find a bigger box for it. I already have the big box, but I don't have... The box still, I guess, in the best condition possible, and then I can add this to it, essentially, is what I'm going for here. So all the different collector types out there, while I kind of go off my other games that I have sealed here, 
I feel like there's the collectors that like buy games because they want to play them. There are certain people that just, you know, use an emulator. Why not turn all of this into one emulator and you can play all of it? I understand that, but I like having the actual physical thing. I think it's really nostalgic. And then there's the collectors that are out there just to kind of increase the wealth and increase the value of collecting. I've never really been all about that. However, I just see so much purpose in it, especially if I can turn something like, here's all three Pikmin games on the Wii and the Wii U, Pikmin 1, 2, and 3 factory sealed. If I can hold on to these maybe for a few years, buy them cheap, and then of course, yes, resell them high years from now, or use them as a monstrous trading piece and get other boxed games that I want that I just can't afford right now. So that's my goal. My goal is to spend like $30 on a sealed Pikmin game, wait a few years, and maybe it's worth 100, maybe 150, and then if I put a few of them together, maybe I can finally afford something like Hagane on the Super Nintendo that's over $1,000, or Harvest Moon on the Super Nintendo, or Snowboard Kids 2 on the N64 and games like that, or even on the GameCube, something like Gotcha Force or Go Go Hyper Grind that I just can't get to right now. So Pikmin New Play Control 1, is the original release that looks like for the Wii, it's not for the GameCube. Then Pikmin Sue is the Nintendo Selects, but I would like to get the normal version. And then Pikmin 3, I would love to get Pikmin 4 sometime soon. It's been way too long that we've been waiting for Pikmin 4. Next up is a trilogy of Metroid games. Literally, I do mean three games. But first, let's actually talk about this Metroid Prime trilogy game. This one is from Blockbuster, of course. It's got the $59.99 sticker on there. For a while, this game was so hard to find, and it was incredibly expensive. This is such a cool way of playing through all three Metroid Prime games. Metroid Prime 1, 2 is Echoes, and 3 is Corruption. So it definitely has a ton of value in one pack. And Nintendo, please port this over to the Switch. You can charge probably still like $50 for this because it's three fantastic games. And to be honest, they're charging how much just for Skyward Sword HD? So this is so cool. Bought it from Blockbuster before they closed in my area. Love having Metroid Prime Trilogy. But I also have Metroid Prime 3 Corruption on its own sealed. This one's not worth that much yet. Who knows? Metroid games don't actually sell that great for Nintendo. That's probably why we don't see a Metroid game as often as we see Zelda and Mario and Kirby, to be honest. This audience is usually a little bit more niche. And then I have Metroid Other M sealed as well. A lot of people kind of said this game isn't that good, and they there was a lot of hate for this game. But overall, I think this was a decent experience. I do have it opened on my Wii wall as well. So I've got those three Metroid games sealed. And now we're heading towards the end. Three more things that I want to talk about that I have sealed. This is Fire Emblem Radiant Dawn. I cannot believe how much the GameCube version is a Path of Radiance Factory sealed now. This one, there are tons of copies of this on eBay. So be really careful. You want to get the one that says probably Nintendo of America or the one from Europe, whatever your region is. But there is one that says UAE that has a sticker down in the corner. And on the back, it says UAE. And some of the sellers are actually trying to hide that information from you. So there's tons of these again on eBay. But you want to make sure you're trying to find this kind of version and then next up is one of the, I'll save the best for last. So first of all, this is the last story, the Collector's Edition Factory Sealed. Any games that I have that are after the Wii U, I'm not really talking about. So I do have some that are still sealed for the Switch. That's just because I haven't got around to playing them yet. And even something like Xenoblade Chronicles 2, I think I have a second, I have a duplicate of that one still sealed. But the last story is one of the best RPGs on the system. This collector's edition did come with a soundtrack if you pre-ordered it. So more on that in a second. It still has the sticker up here. So it's really hard to keep this one in good shape. It oftentimes like this one bends or like obviously you can get some tears in this. And then the best thing for last, this is probably one of the most valuable things in my entire collection. I'm not sure if I'll ever sell this. This is a box from HMV of all three games that were part of Operation Moon, wait, Rainfall. We've got Pandora's Tower, The Last Story, and Xenoblade Chronicles, and an art book. So in here, what I have for you is a factory sealed copy of each of those games. Last Story, Pandora's Tower, and Xenoblade Chronicles the collector's art book, and a factory sealed copy of the soundtrack for The Last Story as well. What makes this so special 
is no one can really find this. It's so hard to find this outer shell case that is supposed to be for the three games. I have found a few other collectors on Reddit that have this box. It's so plain on the side, by the way. I think I have a video up about this from years ago, but the fact that I have it with the three factory sealed games, this is one of the most special things I have in my collection. Such a cool trilogy of games. If you're looking for really good games to play, especially if you're a Wii collector or in the Wii, these three are some of the best of all time, especially with getting more characters to Smash Brothers. It's, it's so cool, this series, especially Xenoblade is what I'm talking about. But the other games are great as well. So let me know your thoughts on collecting video games. Do you think it's worthwhile? Are you into collecting sealed games? Do you want to get something like Spirit Tracks Factory Sealed? Maybe Galaxy 2, it's one of my favorite games of all time, Factory Sealed. Or are you a CIB game collector or maybe just a cartridge or disc only collector? I have saw some of you comment, and I really liked your comments on this, by the way, on the poll I posted on YouTube. Some of you said, if it's a box game, back like NES, Super Nintendo, and N64, the cartridge only is fine. But if it's the GameCube, Wii, and beyond, and it has a plastic case like this, you're definitely more for trying to get, like, the complete in box version, which makes a lot of sense to me. I think trying to get those with the box and manual is a lot easier, of course. And then a few other people were saying, you know, I don't really want a factory sealed game. Why would I want a sealed game if I can maybe save a fourth of the price and buy like four games that I want to play? So I really appreciate your comments and the discussion if we can get going on that. That would be amazing. And I'll try and comment on some of yours as well. If you have a suggestion for a future video, feel free to let me know in the comments below as well. Give this video a like if you could. It helps spread it across the internet and helps with the channel growth. I really appreciate you guys. You guys are awesome. Huge thank you to all of my patrons. You guys are fantastic. Thanks for supporting me for so long. Stay awesome, my friends. Go collect them all and keep smiling while gaming.